has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. I am wearing approved eyewear today, Carver High, and I'm hoping that it's the seeing eye dog. You know that I... I get that Brewers run and a half. I need more runs. The Adamas homer. Now I got a runner at first. Give me a couple of more plated and then kick that one and a half on top of that, you know, cherry on top type stuff. And uh, maybe I'll uh, switch to contacts next week. Who knows? But I got to tell you, um, last night, my favorite play I had going was the Guardians plus a buck 43 with the loser Savali. Sounds like he should have been hanging out at Happy Days with Fonzie. Savali uh, beat uh, Dylan Cease last night on the south side of Chicago. Bob Nightingale and I had a difference of opinion on that game, and I hit it at a buck 43. It was a nice piece. The Guardians have been beating the crap out of the Twins and White Sox like nobody's business. Yeah, both of those guys, Scotty, were long gone when this one was decided. A crazy game late into the night in Chicago. The Guardians were down 3-1 in the 7th. They tied it at 3. They took a lead in the top of the 10th. White Sox tied it in the bottom of the 10th. To the 11th we go, and Cleveland pours it on, Scotty. They score 5 in the 11th, including yeah. Stephen Kwan, two-run single on Woo. Valley Sports Cleveland. And Stephen Kwan with a line drive base hit center field. They're going to wave straw around. Luis Roberts throw is cut off, and another run comes home as Straw dove into home plate safely. Three runs home here in the 11th for Cleveland, and their lead is now 8-5. to five. I can't tell you how much I needed that and that uh, Padre win last night and the Mets. I mean, I got to tell you, otherwise I would have been hiding today. People driving by yeah. my house, I would have been ducking under bushes. <sighs> And just to look at the big picture for these two, the White Sox are now five back with 14 games to play. They're done. Even even if they won tonight and tomorrow and got it to three with 12 games to play, I don't think that that's enough. I think that they're finished. I think they it was sweep or nothing uh, for the White Sox in this series uh, and losing that game. I like them nice tonight season. with Lynn. Lynn, tonight, uh, we've got actually a little action in the props, so a little tater time. We got some guys with good numbers. He started to pitch tonight. well all of a sudden because he's been so worthless all year, and he makes all that money. And so he's pitching like the last three or four starts like he did last year. He was out most uh -huh. of this year, and he was terrible. Now he's starting to pitch well. I took a piece on him tonight. Well, he can win tonight. Uh, just give up a home run to Jose Ramirez along the way. The Diamondbacks and the Dodgers. Little taste oh. uh, for the home runs in a little bit, Scotty. Diamondbacks and the Dodgers split a doubleheader out in Los Angeles. Diamondbacks had a big lead in game number one. Five-run rally in the eighth for the Dodgers. Able to get them the first game. Second game, Arizona takes care of business. How about your boy, the kid, double C, Corbin Carroll, Scotty, with the RBI triple on Bally Sports, Arizona. Corbin down the line. Alcantara is on the move. Can he make it all the way home? Carroll right behind. They're going to wave Alcantara. Betts has it in the corner. The relay from Lux is not in time. Corbin Carroll with the RBI triple. I mean, there you go. They got the nightcap. It, it happens all the time. After that big rally to win 6-5 in the sunshine, uh, they were gassed. And I think that's why they lost the nightcap. I almost jumped in on that in game because I didn't believe in the Dodgers late night. Uh, I did not either. And look, uh, they got nothing left to play. The next two weeks for the Dodgers is basically keep everybody healthy. Uh, that, that's it. I mean, they've got everything pretty much wrapped up. Try to win 106 games. That's all they're doing. Yes, yes. That's that's pretty much where they're at at this point. The Padres beat the Cardinals 5-0 at Petco with the soft serve ice cream. Uh, two runs in the first. All they would need, Jake Cronenworth on Bally Sports San Diego. Cronenworth fights that one off, sends it the other way. They're going to score in the first inning again. 
Couple of runs will score. Jake Cronenworth comes through, and the Padres take an early lead. As you know, Mafia knows that I, 15 weeks ago I gave up eating ice cream, and it's been a devastating occurrence yeah. in my life. No sorbet, no ice cream, no junk food, wow. no carbs, no pasta, no bread. It's been, uh, it's like doing time at San Quentin. I mean, it really is. Uh, without my soft serve Petco ice cream, I have nightmares about it. Last night I woke up with my leg twitching. <laughs> The Padres now have the second wild card spot in the National League. They would play the Braves uh, in the wild card round. They're going to be fun to watch today. That would be that would be fun series. Uh, that fun weekend three gamer. If you get the Braves and the Padres in Atlanta, uh, that's going to be, be good. Fun. Next, uh, Red Sox beat the Reds five three. I know that that was a cover for you. The Cubs beat the Marlins two to one. Astros beat the Rays 5-0. And I know you and Craig were talking about it earlier. Last night was the game the Astros should have lost. Uh, they celebrated the night before. You were right, right, Scotty. We played Dusty yesterday with the glasses on and all the nonsense. It didn't matter. Uh, they still came out and won the game uh, 5-0. Jeremy Pena hit a three-run shot in that one. Rays just got nothing going. And Rays now, Scotty, have slipped to the third wild card in the American League. Maybe that's not a bad thing. They would play Cleveland, good or bad. I don't know. Cleveland's well, I'm feeling bad. like they're going to lose again today to the Astros. I hope we already uh, welcomed all our radio affiliates. I can't even remember anymore. I've lost track of time. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. With a game that I find to be the most fascinating spread in all of the country today. Because it doesn't seem large enough. College football it's, today. It's the island of misfit tour. Fantasy sports so, today. You have to understand. And survivor pools for the most part because. Pro football I don't today. The most important player, despite not being quarter focused of it, and I, I think that continues to be a really important part of the offense. Half in game in this game. I said it'll be a pure track me shootout. Half in game. Line. I'm not one who's going to cheer for Kyler Murray, but I am cheering for him in the second half. In game live overtime. Over in nine Ks. And I almost, I almost read it as if it was a question. Like, what are they I doing? In when they were football you know, full circle, plus one and a half. I mean, this was an insane amount of Get line the movement. winning edge only on Sports Grid, your twenty four seven sports wagering network. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or TuneIn, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The morning after. Aaron Rodgers is playing with a ton of new wide receivers this season and doesn't seem all that happy about it. Today we hit the streets of New York to help and find out what's the best way to make new friends. What would you say is the best way to make new friends? Uh, not by talking to them on the street. So not, don't do this. Yeah. Go out and drink, go to the bar. You know, you have to. Maybe not like this. Give him money. Smile. That was nice, you wanna give the smile again? The Sports Grid Network. And Deion Branch, David Givens, Tom Brady makes great players. And Cole Beasley, who's a pretty good player in the NFL with Dallas and with Buffalo, is now on the verge of great. Is this really something that serious sports bettors want to do? I don't know. Are you tapping a different market? Are you maybe tapping a market that's more fantasy inclined when you're going out and you're picking your, your players for your team? Newswire, only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. Josh Allen with another great game in fantasy football. Four touchdowns, over 300 yards, but less running, which is really interesting. The James Cook production all came in garbage time. I think uh, 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 until the fourth quarter, so at the end of the third quarter, he had four rushes for three yards. Although, if you are looking for a positive signal here, he did get his first rush 
before Zach Moss got his first run. The Sports Grid Network. As usual, Carver High, I blew by uh, Mafia's house last night at a late hour, and there he was, passed out on his front porch, mouth open, bottle of bullet bourbon spilling on his pants near his zipper, dog dry humping his leg. I'm like, hey, Mafia. He was like, oh, he woke up. I was like, and his wife hit me over the head with a newspaper. She thought I was a burglar. All these things happen to me. I just tried to pick up an earpiece, and this happens to me. Wow, that's uh, some scene you described uh, over there at the uh, <laughs> Mafia Palatial yesterday. Jeez, uh, look out. Uh, the bullet bourbon, that's always a good one. You got to get involved with that. Let me finish up. That could be the scene at my house when I get home from Florida next weekend, by the way. Uh, that might be me laying on the front lawn uh, with an empty wallet. Uh, so just keep, keep your eyes out for that. <laughs> in debt for two <laughs> years you better uh, get a loan out for that trip down there to disney world geez. get a loan we're gonna be on the bills and the ravens rates. in week four when i get home look out uh the blue jays beat the phillies 18 11 last night 29 runs scored how about that uh there were several home runs in this game scotty schwarbaum hit his 40th for the phillies uh matt chapman went big fly a three-run shot on sportsnet and he just might have done it as he belts it to deep left field and way gone. A three-run homer here in the first inning for Matt Chapman to give the Blue Jays an early lead. I'm telling you, you get that guy going with Bichette and Vladdy Jr. and Springer, and if they get any pitching whatsoever, they can beat anybody. Right now, it would be Toronto and Seattle. In Toronto... Three games, who wins Who wins that's two out of three in that wild card round? That's tough. I mean, that's, that's brutal. I, I, I would lean Seattle. I, I think all around they have better pitching and they have great defense, speed with Rodriguez and uh, a lot of talent on that team with France and it goes on and on. But I think that the Blue Jays are every bit able to beat anybody. They could easily win just as easily as I think Seattle could. Uh, I'm not yeah, certain think- of anything there. That's going to be dangerous betting by the day. Yeah, uh, that, I think a slight lean for me as well, just because of the arms that Seattle's going to bring uh, into that weekend to start those games. Uh, very interesting if we get that. They need Suarez Rangers back be- too with the, the yeah. thumb. Uh, you know, yeah, his hand bad. injury is bad. It is. I, I don't know if they'll get him uh, within the next two, three weeks, though, for that series. Uh, that and he won't be in see. sync. You know what I mean? No, no, no. Not going to have the at-bats. Tigers beat the Orioles again, 3-2. to two. Uh, So the Orioles falling asleep here at home the last couple of nights with the Tigers in town. Angels beat the Rangers 5-2. It's gotten so bad for the Angels, Scotty. Even their catcher had to retire. Uh, Kurt Suzuki, he's going to hang him up. After 16 years uh, in the majors, good for Kurt. Uh, been a good player in the league. Royals beat the Twins 5-4, another team that's absolutely mailing it in in September. You mentioned it with Craig. Drayton Moore got the uh, the chop, got chopped in Kansas City today. President of baseball operations for a long time there, including He's the two ring. teams that went to the World Series uh, in 14 and 15. So he is out the door, a change in Kansas City. Giants beat the Rockies 6-3. Buster Posey going to be an owner now, Scotty. Joins the ownership group. Of course, won three World Series in the Bay Area with the Giants. Got plenty of money poured into the team. That's one way to do it. <laughs> well, it's very exciting for him. I don't think anybody else cares. Speaking of money, I didn't bring this up with you earlier when we talked about Judge. How about the guy giving him the ball for a couple of autographs? What would you have done if you got that 60th home run ball that everybody says is going to be worth so much money? Well, would you gave it to him for a couple of autographs? I don't know. As you know, Mike, oh. as you know, Mike, of all people, I am uh, Johnny Greedy, and I would have yeah, uh, sold that I, ball I, 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 uh, to the highest I, bidder 
Uh, there wouldn't be any I, auto, I don't need autographs. I don't care about any I, athlete or celebrity's autograph at all, ever. Yeah. I never have. I never will. People ask me what I have. The, the thing that I have of 40 years in television and radio uh, and broadcasting and doing every job in the world, I have, I've kept all of my boxing credentials. I have Ooh. hundreds of them. That's it. I have all those. Too, I man. have these, these, you know, hanging credentials from uh, boxing. I didn't even keep, I've been to 15 Super Bowls. I don't even have the Super Bowl tickets. I don't care. I got a terrible towel and I got a bunch of boxing credentials and I have every credential that I had uh, when I called the Thrasher games. Uh, I, I kept every game of 82 games. I have it in a picture in my studio right now. It also is worthless. Said the ball's worth like between fifty and $100,000. Kid got four signed balls and a signed bat and a picture with him. Man, they got him good. Uh, last Fail. Night, that's for sure. Fail. They got him good. Uh, and the Mariners uh, did lose last night at the ashtray, four to one with fail going. That was another fail last oh, night. As well. I right, lost two hundred bucks on that game. <laughs> that stupid son of a. Uh, I ought to. I gotta tell you. Remember, I said I woke up with my leg twitching. So I wake up at three in the morning. I gotta hit the head. I go walking in. I stumble back. I always hit the the mouthwash too, so I don't breathe in my own foul breath when I'm sleeping. So I lay down and I'm like, all right, I got to at least look. And I look over and I see four to one ace. And that was when my legs started twitching. Oh, uh, 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 my health uh, is not good. Not good. Let's get to some props for tonight. And then we'll do tonight's games. We'll start with the strikeouts. Here's what we have cooking tonight, Scotty. Oh. Zach Wheeler for the Phillies is making his first start since August the 20th. He will face the Blue Jays tonight in Philadelphia. This number's actually gone down to three and a half. It's four and a half earlier this morning, and I was thinking over, under, over, under. I was going to go over anyway. Now down to three and a half, minus 135. I'm going to go over. Tristan McKenzie for the Guardians tonight. Four and a half is the number for him. Up to five and a half now. Over minus 165. McKenzie's over in his last four. He had 14 strikeouts against the White Sox back in August. Snell, six and a half against the Cardinals. I like the under tonight. He is over in three of his last four. Had six against the Cardinals back in June. And Robbie Ray will try the Mariners again. Six and a half. He's under in his last three. But maybe he can rack them up against the A's. He's got 12 and 10 against them in two starts this year. I like that over. I like Wheeler under. I like McKenzie under. I like Snell under. I like, yeah. as I said, Ray over. Because I'm betting right. uh, Wheeler hasn't pitched in a month. And have fun pitching against them. They've been getting lit up. Toronto doesn't strike out a lot. And McKenzie, I need him to go under so that my Lance Lynn bet will hit. I can't have this guy striking out a bunch of White Sox. And then I'm on the Cardinals, so I hope Blake Snell gets lit up in the first two innings. Let's get to the taters here. I got no football tonight. I want to ring the bell here, Scotty. Let's go. Schwarbaum tonight in Philadelphia. How about these numbers? Three for five off of Kevin Gossman. All three hits left the yard. Plus 210 for Schwarbaum tonight. He's got three homers off of Mike Trout. He's beat up this uh, guy Dunning on the Rangers. Five for 12 and two home runs off of him, plus 250. Jose Ramirez, I told you, Lynn can win the game, but give up a dinger to Jose. 10 for 29 with four home runs off of Lance Lynn. We hit him in a similar spot two weeks ago. And Justin Turner for the Dodgers, 19 for 77. He's faced Bumgarner a lot, has four homers off of him in his career, plus 350 for Turner. I'm going to go Schwarbaum, yes. Trout, no. Ramirez and Turner, yes. Let's go. Three out of four tonight. I want to ring the bell tonight, Scotty. I got no touchdowns. I got no football. All I got is my home runs. Uh, later on, we will. We hit Judge last night. We did. Judge, 170 tonight, Scotty. Give me another Plus one tonight. 61. Give me another one tonight. Give me another Stanton tonight. Uh. <laughs> Goldie.
Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. The game that I find to be the most fascinating spread in all of the country today because it doesn't seem large enough. College football today. It's the island of misfit tours. Fantasy sports so today. You have to understand. Survivor pools for the most part because. Pro football I don't today. With. Most important player, despite not being quarter focus of it, and I, I think that continues to be a really important part of the offense. And a half in game in this game. game. I said it'll be a clear track me shootout. Cap in game line. I'm not one who's going to cheer for Kylo Murray, but I am cheering for him in the second half. In game live. Oh, overtime. One walk in 9Ks. And I almost, I almost read it as if it was a question. Like, what are they I doing? It in when they were football you know, full circle, plus one and a half. I mean, this was an insane amount of Get line. Get the movement. winning edge only on Sports Grid, your twenty four seven sports wagering network. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The morning after. Aaron Rodgers is playing with a ton of new wide receivers this season and doesn't seem all that happy about it. Today we hit the streets of New York to help and find out what's the best way to make new friends. What would you say is the best way to make new friends? Uh, not by talking to them on the street. So not, don't do this. Yeah. Go out and drink, go to the bar. You know, you have to. Maybe not like this. Give them money. Smile. That was nice, you wanna give the smile again? The Sports Grid Network. At Dion Branch, David Gibbons, Tom Brady makes great players. And Cole Beasley, who's a pretty good player in the NFL with Dallas and with Buffalo, is now on the verge of greatness. Is this really something that serious sports bettors want to do? I don't know. Are you tapping a different market? Are you maybe tapping a market that's more fantasy inclined when you're going out and you're picking your, your players for your team? Newswire, only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. Josh Allen with another great game in fantasy football. Four touchdowns, over 300 yards, but less running, which is really interesting. The James Cook production all came in garbage time, I think, uh, 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 until the fourth quarter. So at the end of the third quarter, he had four rushes for three yards. Although, if you are looking for a positive signal here, he did get his first rush before Zach Moss got his first rush. The Sports Grid Network. The brighter the lights, the bigger the stakes. Hunt or be hunted. Know your prey. This is a whole new jungle. This is The Lion's Share. Brought to you by BetMGM. All right, Carver High, this is where uh, the rubber meets the road. This is where we make everyone lots of money, and there are millions of fans that love watching C2C for the free cash giveaways. Uh, They certainly do, Scotty. And on the lion's share, brought to you by BetMGM now on Wednesdays, we'll be focusing a lot on NFL futures. Now, every week I always give all these things to you. Why don't we feature them on the lion's share and get ourselves cooking here so we know every single Wednesday we're going to get an updated look at all the futures, the awards, et cetera, et cetera, in the NFL as we head into week number three. We will start with the Super Bowl. Bills now. Look at this number on the Bills after smashing the Rams and the Titans. They are now plus 400. Scotty, the Chiefs are plus 650. The Bucks are up there. The Eagles have made a big move up the board to 11 to one. The Packers at 12 to one now as well in the top five. I might believe in the Packers a little more if they win at Raymond James on Sunday afternoon over Tom Brady. Uh, Right now, I don't deny the Buccaneers defense is excellent. Uh, Their offense to me looks relatively, you know, kind of plaid for me. They're not doing anything. They're all injured up front. Their receivers are all out or suspended. 
Uh, they're hiring guys uh, that were, you know, working down at the deli to play wide receiver this week. There's a huge opening in the crack for the Packers, if you ask me. I think right now, I'm not buying them at this point uh, with the way they're not using Brady. I'm not buying that. I, I'm buying explosive, you know, pound you, beat you, stop you teams. And that would be the Buffalo Bills. I am not convinced yet of the Kansas City Chiefs because I have not seen them yet in a hostile situation where they're, you know, troubled or have problems or are down or are injured or anything else. I would put the Eagles right now from what I've seen, they were up 20 on the Lions and then said, let's just let them back to us and screw all the betters. That's what that, that was. And then uh, I thought on Monday night, they just absolutely disseminated the, uh, you know, Vikings. To me, they look very dangerous. And I know that uh, I always thought that the Cowboys would still be tough in the East and defend. But when Dak went down, that opened the door for the Eagles. And everyone that says, you know, Jalen Hurts is it's now or never. Uh, he's on the clock. He's on the hot seat. He has to, you know, put up or shut up all this other nonsense. He has solidified not just Monday night, but every night. To me, he is lock, stock, and barrel the future at quarterback for the Eagles. I think he's done great. They are a dangerous football team, and especially with Slay in the secondary. Excellent through two games, and that is why Jalen Hurts has also made, Scotty, our next board in the top five. That is MVP odds after two weeks in the NFL. Jalen Hurts up like a bullet into that top five, now 10 to 1. Allen, the favorite at 3 to 1. Mahomes plus 450. Herbert and Hertz are 10 to 1. Lamar Jackson, 11 to 1. And just missing the top five this week, Scotty, went way up the board, is Tua at 16 to 1. He's right behind those guys. Listen, if Tua Tagovailoa beats the Bills at Hard Rock on Sunday, which you know, I'm not going to doubt anything this kid can do with what he did to Baltimore. So that just racked Lamar Jackson for me off the list. He's off the list yeah. for me. You know why? Because when you're up 35 to 14 and you're the alleged 250 $300 million man and MVP and all the rest, he's already got one. But to me, you're up. He had a 79-yard run and they still lost. They, they still lost the game. If you're the MVP of the league, you don't let that happen. I don't care about the defense or every, the coach. You blame whoever you want. I'm done with him for MVP. To me, this is Josh Allen. If he's healthy, it's over because he is dominating the NFL. Now, I know everybody loves Patrick Mahomes. It's Mahomes TV every week. But the show that everyone's watching, the series everyone's really watching, is the Buffalo Bills channel. The Bills are the best offering in the NFL, not the Chiefs. It's the Bills. If the Bills play the Chiefs tomorrow, let's say in Orchard Park in an AFC championship game, the Bills are going to kick their teeth in for what happened last year at Arrowhead. They will kick their teeth in by 17. They're going to beat their ass and rub it in their face. Count on that. And you can run this tape then because it's going to happen. The Bills return to Arrowhead week six. Bills Chiefs. Now they're going to beat them then too. Week six, the first meeting since the 13 second game back in January. That will be on the Bills' minds all they're week. They're going to beat them. It's been on, their, been on their minds all year so far, the way they're beating people up. Defensive player of the year. Top five in the odds. Micah Parsons, I think deservedly so, Scotty, the favorite, plus 350 with the way he's played. Through the first two weeks, Miles Garrett plus 450, Nick Bosa, Aaron Donald, Joey Bosa, all up there. Von Miller just off the miss, 22 to 1. What I tell you, Minka was last week? What I say, 80 to 1, 75 to 1, something like that for Minka Fitzpatrick? Now, what, 35 30? to 1. 35. It, cut in half. Listen, from a week for ago. my money, for my money right now, and I know that's crazy because I respect Parsons, what he's doing is crazy. But for my money, Menka, Fitzpatrick, and Darius Slay have been game-changing players, game-changing defenders, game-changing stoppers. What that guy did 
to Jefferson the other night in Philly was embarrassing. He shut down the alleged best receiver in the NFL, which he's not. I mean, Ty Hill, when that guy's wide open by 40 yards every time he goes out, that's the best receiver in the NFL. Not the guy that has four yards or something against Darius Slay. Darius Slay and Minka Fitzpatrick. Minka did it again on, on Sunday against the Pats. Yep. I mean, this guy, every game is doing something big. And all they do is give it to guys that get sacks, like they do with T.J. Yeah. Watt. But guys that are stopped, this is a league of quarterbacks and receivers. And the guys that rush the passer get paid a lot of money. But the guys that stop receivers are the most important players on the field. Cornerbacks have to be paid like receivers and like edge rushers and quarterbacks. Because if you don't have great corners in the NFL, you're not winning Shaq. I think we're going to be very happy having that Minka ticket uh, from last week at 80-1 to 1 in our pocket uh, as we get further and further into the season because he has been excellent, and I expect him to be just as good all year long. Offensive player of the year, Justin Jefferson, 7-1. to 1, Cup, 8-1. to 1. Here comes Stephon Diggs, Scotty. Two monster weeks, plus 850. Way up the board. Jonathan Taylor's been awful. He's 9-1. to 1. Chase, 12-1 to 1 after a bad week. I said to you on this show multiple times that before the season even started, the best player this year in the NFL will be Stefan Diggs because he's got Josh Allen as his lover. I mean, this guy throws to him three touchdowns the other night. It's already Stefan Diggs. Jefferson had one good game and won the invisible man game. You cannot yeah. be the MVP when a guy shuts you down so bad they don't say your name once all night, okay? Stephon Diggs, they say his name every three minutes. 12 catches for a buck 48 and three That's touchdowns. That's it. Game over. Night. He's the MVP right now. Game over. I don't even want to discuss this anymore. Move on. The coach of the year. Top five going into week number three. You know who Mike that is. McDaniel. Mike it's McDaniel. Him. There he is. Shula, five Don to one, Shula. is the leader. Dable, 8-1. to O'Connell, 9-1 to off a loss. Sirianni with the Eagles playing well. Brandon Staley, everybody loves him at 10-1. to Would you like to know where the Bills head coach, Sean McDermott, is? 22-1. to Now, I'm just saying, if they go like 15-2 and or something and they smash everybody all year. He'll get it. How is he not... How is he not in the running? 22 to 1 right now. Get that ticket right now to me, overnighted, in the mail. Give me that ticket. And then uh, give me a piece on McDaniel with his hoodies and his, you know, winter long sleeve shirts down in 100 degree Miami and 100% humidity. My man Shula's in the lead by far right now, by very far. And he will face McDermott this Sunday down at South Beach. Comeback player of the year, Barkley is the leader on the odds board after two weeks, plus 550 for Saquon. Winston, Henry, McCaffrey, and Brian Robinson, who, as we saw, has begun practicing for Washington 7-1 to one, uh, after getting shot a couple weeks ago. Hasn't played in a game yet, though. You got to give it to Robinson because when he comes back and plays, they're going to feel sorry for him like uh, Cousins. Or, or like, uh, what was his name? The guy with the leg. I can't think of his name uh, off the top of my head Alex from Hawaii. Smith. Uh, yeah, Alex Smith. Alex Smith. Wait, Alex Smith. Uh, I Alex forgot Smith. about him already. I got early for Alzheimer's. My man, after he had his leg cut off, they gave it to uh, him just for making it back. Your boy got shot. He got carjacked. When he goes back on the NFL, the award's a done deal. Plus, Walter Payton Man of the Year. Watch. You'll see. I've snuck in the offensive rookie of the year. I can't find Pickens anymore. He's not at the favorite. Drake London, Garrett Wilson, Jahan Dotson, Brian Robinson, and Brees Hall. Wilson looked good for the Jets on Sunday, Scotty. I will say Mike, that. Mike, great minds think alike. It's already his award. The guy looks unguardable right now. And if I were the Jets, I would start targeting him over 10 times a game. He has incredible speed and talent, and, and he runs great routes. And he doesn't drop the ball ever. So I'm on Wilson. The Lion's Share, brought to you by BetMGM. There you go. (laughs) 
The Lion's Share, presented by Pet MGM. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. It is really all about winning, but at the end of the day, if anyone tells you it's not about winning money, they're lying to you. Why do we DFS? Why do we play in these leagues? Why do we pay so much attention? It's because we want to win and we want to win the money. If you have some wide receivers that might have two or three weeks of tough corner matchups ahead of them, don't just get all bent out of shape about these guys. In fact, go find them, target them in other leagues, and trade for them. Fantasy Sports Today, only on Sports Grid. The level of suckness goes here, Scott, on the suckness scale. Um, Hawaii is not going to suck as bad as Duquesne is. I love my Canes, and they hate me in Tallahassee, obviously. But I wanted to say that last night was the first time in 20 years that I bet on Florida State in a football game. I won't even let my kid go look at the school. In-game live all access only on SportsGrid. The morning after. What do the Tennessee Titans need to change on the ground to get Derrick Henry back to what we expect for the King? The Tennessee Titans are a run-first team. That is their identity, right? You run the ball to set up the pass. That is where they start their entire offense and they go from there. So obviously, when the run game isn't working, the whole offense is starting to struggle and stall, especially when you don't have a top wide receiver. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. Tonight, I guess they've activated Bader. What can fans expect to see from the gold glove outfielder with tons of speed who's been out all year with plantar fasciitis? Well, he's an outstanding uh, center fielder, you know, won the gold glove. Uh, I think the fans will love him a lot. I mean, he's a gamer, plays a game very hard, great defense, and well as I know of Aaron Judge back to his natural position right field. The Sports Grid Network. Our favorite Miami contributor to uh, Coast to Coast, you would think it would be the mayor, Joe Ranieri, who I do uh, in-game live all access with on Saturdays. But no, 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 it isn't, Joe. We love Joe as the mayor. But our contributor has always been Jumanji, Zach Grants of uh, the great QAM morning show with Joe Rose and Krantz, uh, number one in Miami, as always. Uh, Zach, it's good to see you. Uh, I want to start by saying... Uh, hey, what's up, bro? Good to have you back on. And B, I have never seen anything like that comeback by the Dolphins on Sunday in the Charm City. I actually uh, had the Ravens on the money line to win. They were up 35 to 14. They were up 28 to 7. I have never in my life seen anything like that and the Browns choke with a minute 55 left or the Rams up 31 10 and they couldn't cover either and I wanted to puke and the Arizona come back to boot but I had Arizona the other three I bent over and lubed up but what (laughs) did they say in Miami after the Dolphins told everyone to F off because you know they've been riding this guy to a since he came to Miami that he sucks and they're terrible, and he'll never be the man, and he can't live up to 
Dan Marino and the Dolphins have no chance with him as their quarterback. If I'm him, I'm double birds for everybody. Kiss my effing ass. What a performance. You basically said it all there, right there. I mean, Tua did it. Like, three quarters in, uh, people, we were done. The game's over. Like, you're down 21 going into the fourth quarter. This team, just Baltimore, is just crushing you. They had, what, three plays of 70-plus yards. Lamar threw for 300, ran for a buck 11 or whatever it was, had a couple touchdowns. I mean, it was ridiculous. And then all of a sudden, I don't know what happened. Tua and the offense just kind of woke up. Mike McDaniel said earlier to, uh, I think it was the reporters, he said it to Peter King, that basically I want to see how this team plays with adversity. Well, that's a pretty good example of going into the fourth quarter down three touchdowns. The difference was there's no shot I thought they were going to come back. Tyreek went out with cramps. He was a little out of it at that point. But I, I'm, I'm still shocked, even to the, to the second that we're talking right now, that they came back and won that game 42-38. There's no way going into the fourth quarter you could have told me the Dolphins were going to have that kind of quarter. Two was going to throw for 200-plus, almost 300 yards in that quarter. And he's going to end up with 506 touchdowns, or almost 506 touchdowns, 469. No chance. Tua, basically, after the game, if I was him, I would have done the same thing to you. I would have double-birded everyone, went to the locker room, said, I'm not talking, and just smiled the whole way there. Probably had my pants off, too, at that point, just for the kind of party that was. It was incredible for him. Do you uh, remember, in your lifetime, a, a better Dolphin win? Uh, yeah, uh, I can tell you one that felt as good, but it was for the wrong reasons. It was the year that Cleo Lemon threw that touchdown pass against Baltimore. And Greg Camarillo, so you could win one win, that had one win that season. That was the only other feeling I could even come close to in my lifetime of that. Because it was just, an, that was a miraculous win. There's no way the Dolphins should have won that one game years and years ago. But there's no shot that they should have won against Baltimore. Baltimore should have won by about two more touchdowns than they than they were up at that point. They should have won by five touchdowns. And instead, they lost by four. I still, like like I said, I'm still shocked. I can't believe it. But it only compares to one other game. And that game is when they went 1-15 and beat, beat Baltimore. That's it. Does Joe Rose say at any point to you that the kid reminds him of Don Shula, that uh, McDaniel reminds him of Shula. He, uh, he looks just like him with those glasses on the sideline right. when he was 30 years old and coaching the Dolphins. I think this kid is taking over Miami. I mean, this guy, he is the deal. And what they're doing with this guy, it is something special. You should have seen the text messages, the calls, everything when this guy took the job. Who is McNerd? We just hired Harry Potter. What's going right. on here? This is never going to work. He's all about positive reinforcement. He doesn't scream at the guys. He wants the guys to be healthy. He doesn't even want them playing in games. Guess what? Everything so far is working. I know we're only two games in, but there's no way you could have foreseen this from happening at this point. And I'm, I'm with it. Has Joe ever said that? No, because of the fact that Shula was up your ass every single time that you did anything wrong. And instead, McDaniel's like, hey, we'll fix it. You threw an interception, we'll fix it. You missed the sack, we'll fix it. Shula used to throw you against the wall and scream at you and show the tape 100 times. This guy will literally just say, don't worry, Scotty, don't worry. You messed up yesterday, we're going to fix it. It's okay. You're allowed to mess up. Totally different kind of mentality, but... I mean, this is something new. I've been around a, a lot of wave. coaches since I've been down here. Right, a new wave of coaches. And I've been around a bunch. Flores, Saban, I mean, Adam Gase. You name the guy down here, I've covered him. I've never covered anyone like Mike McDaniel, ever in the, in the entire 22 years that I've been doing radio down here in South Florida. Never, Tony Sperano, never has there been a guy like Mike McDaniel. And I think it's different, but I do think you're right. It's the new wave of coaching. No more of the screaming rah rah Belichick ways. That's old school. We're in a new school world right now. And, and if it works, then LA wins and Miami wins, and all these new school coaches are winning. That's going to be the new trend. We actually run clips of him on the show on almost a daily basis. His pressers are fantastic. He's loose, he's funny. 
Uh, why does he wear long sleeved shirts and hoodies when it's 95 degrees outside and 100% humidity? As you know, working with me in Morning Drive for uh, that year of just magic, uh, I never wore clothes once. I was naked every day. Uh, at least every, like at least six days a week out of the seven, you were naked. I mean, I, I unfortunately I didn't see a lot of that. Yeah. Listen, Thank you know how hot it was down here. I came to your house in a headband, sweat right through it, and helped you move at that point in, in a basketball With a jersey. Dr. J You're jersey not... on. Right, right. Like, you can't, you live in South Florida, whether you live here for a day, a month, or my entire life down here in South Florida, you don't wear long sleeves. I probably have three long sleeve shirts in my entire closet. Otherwise, is it because he's got, back... is it because he's got bologna slices going and he wants to hide them, you think? It's possible. I mean, it'd be a good way to do that to wear long <laughs> sleeve all the time. But let me tell you something. Those bologna slices would come right through the sweat because it has been scorching hot down here the last couple months. Training camp, we did live broadcast from training camp at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. And let me tell you, I was sweating with no sun out. I can't even imagine what it was like on that field while they were practicing. I was in an ice bath drinking ice water. Feed, I mean, like it was ridiculous. So, Girl, you know, it's gross know. down here. It, it's Vietnam. It, it's Indonesia. <laughs> All right. So tell me about, uh, you know, uh, Waddle, Hill, and Gasicki. They got a three pronged monster down there, and he just finds one of them. And then it is, you know, after catch craziness between the gritty and the touchdowns and the wide open bombs and the game winning catches in the end zone. All three of them are magical. It was so funny when we saw a story that they were going to trade Gasicki. I go, when hell freezes over. Let me tell you, that was the storyline in camp, the whole camp, because he wasn't getting passes thrown his way. That They kept talking about the fact that he's learning how to block. He came out in a press conference and said, I'm learning a whole new position. Well, I'm no genius, but you played tight end in college, and you got drafted as a tight end. And I know that Flores and that offense the year before had you in kind of the wide receiver role. But how do you not know how to play tight end? And he came out. I was one of those people, Scotty. Got to trade this guy. He doesn't fit in this offense. Let me tell you, I was happier than anything. It was great to see Tyreek go for almost 200 and Waddle go for 170 or 160, whatever the final number was. I'll tell you what I was most impressed by. The fact that Siki got in the game, got four catches for 40 yards. His dance was terrible, but he got in the end zone. And it showed me one thing. I'm glad you, you you went out and signed Cedric Wilson and a couple wide receivers from San Francisco and this and that. Gesicki's the third best receiver on this team. It's not even a question. I don't care who else you throw out there. I don't care what running back a catch out of the backfield. Gesicki's the third best receiver, and you finally got to use them. If this is the blueprint for the rest of the season, Scotty, we might have a winning team down here for the first time in a long time, a playoff team. Oh, oh, oh you're going to have a winning season, believe me, you. And they were my sleeper team this year. Uh, going into the season for sure. So I, I got one last question, a double-sided uh, question, uh, side A, side B. A, uh, what do you think they're going to do against the Bills who have gone down there the last two Septembers and had sex with them? And B, what's the deal with the Canes? That performance in Kyle Field was like uh, having uh, Oof, open well, up I'll tell the you eggs this. and 12 of them are cracked. Uh, the Bills. I think we just lost him. How unfortunate. Uh, uh, did we lose him completely? There you go. So uh, I'll ask. Thank you, Zach. I love you. Good to see you. All the best. Uh, you might want to pay the electric bill. Anyway, uh, Carver High, I ask you then side A only because I don't really care about your opinion of the Canes. I got that covered. I already know how bad they are after that performance. Then again, uh, I told you A&M would win. Here's the deal. Uh, do the Bills. You told me yesterday that it's 20 straight games of double digit wins and two in a row down in Miami where they literally slept with their best friends, girlfriends. I mean, they did whatever they wanted. It was free sex. Well, what Zach was about to say to you, Scotty is probably that the dolphins are going to get whacked on Sunday. No, I don't know. I don't know if Zach was going to say that to you, but uh, I think it's very possible that that's the outcome. I respect this team. I, I, my tune has changed on McDaniel. Everything that Zach said there, I didn't I say the same thing to you when they hired him? Well, you said it all. Look at this guy. They got the nerd as the coach. They're not going to win with this guy. I think he's hilarious, uh, and he's done a pretty damn good job the first two weeks. I think that they are a formidable opponent, but 
I think the Bills destroy them every year. And I don't think enough has changed yet to where they're going to be in the game on Sunday. And I don't care about the heat. The Bills have won the last two years there in September. They got no problems with it whatsoever. I don't think the Bills care about heat, snow, fans, drunks, spreads, totals, TV personalities, radio, uh, podcasters. Everybody thinks they're an expert. And it doesn't matter what anyone thinks they are because the Bills are everything and then some. They go through everyone like they don't even exist. It's the craziest thing I've seen. I got to tell you, I've already pounced on that at five and a half and it already moved to six. I'm with you. Uh, I think that that's one. I'm going to have to put that in before I take that big jumbo jetliner down to Florida because, as you know, of course, embarrassingly, we cannot play down there uh, as of yet. So I'm going to have to get that in before we get on that plane down there. I expect them, Scotty. I told you, anything up to seven, and I probably wouldn't even mind it there either. Uh, I'm perfectly now, fine with it. Listen, I, here's the story. I've seen it before, folks. Here's what's going to happen. Uh, Carver High is going to check into the resort at the, you know, Disney, uh, you know, on yeah. the, you know, on the campus. They got a lot of hotels there and in, in the park, and he's staying there. He's got the whole seven day thing going. The whole family's going to be there, kids, and everything. Here's what he's going to do. So they go in Saturday, and then they get in Saturday night, and then Carver High say, "I'm going to go get some ice." And then he's going to go down the hall to get the ice. He's going to show up on Monday morning. He's going to leave Saturday for the ice. Monday morning, he's going to come back to the room and say he got lost. The whole time, there's going to be photos of him with Haro sitting in Ross's suite at the Dolphins. (laughs) You know that. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play less Aaron Rodgers and the, the morning Russell after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game penguins. time decisions. Plus, this is a good Purdue football team. They lose George Karloff. In game live I all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bam. I think Mandy can win the game, take a four and a In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, time. In game live overtime. All done before the final bet can get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid. prove how much better they are than Texas, this actually matters. Winning this game 65-0 matters. Because, see, they see because UL Monroe lost to Texas 52-10. to Oh, you team is playing defense this year. I understand it's Kent State wow. and UTEP, but they're only allowing, on average, eight points per game. They held Kent State to just three points last week, Kev, and we talked about that total mm-hmm. on last week's show. College football today, only on SportsGrid. The early line. You look at the pick for Garrett Wilson. Okay, you know, big guy coming from a big program. Got to step up here. Oh, no, he's going to take a downgrade because maybe his quarterback isn't as good. That's an unbelievable performance. And also, let's take a look at the pressures that he had. Going back to the state of Ohio where he's got some legendary status there. Eight for 102 and two scores in a monster comeback, which he was a big part of here. And also, take a look at Chris Olave. Where is he going to fit in? You're right. He's supposed to be that third wheel option. Learn under the other two. Only on Sports Grid. Sports Professor Riccaro into the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your daily numbers game. Anatomy of the Amazon Prime Thursday night deal that everybody is up in arms of. Well, clearly not the NFL. A multi-billion dollar 11-year deal, about a billion a year. Those are found dollars that nobody expected. What about the consumer? A lot of articles about how hard it is to find, but that was expected in the marketing plan. Remember, there are about 172 million current subscribers for Amazon and Amazon Prime in the U.S., about 200 million globally. That's a big number, but they want more. And at $15 a month, they're going to try as much as they can to get more. The plan is this. 
Try to find the games on Thursday night. Get upset because it's not there. Find out how to get it and then realize that it's really not that expensive relative to everything else you get and the subscriptions continue to go up. That's what Amazon bets on. Fans love today in Carver High history. How about we start today in 1955? Final fight of his career. Rocky Marciano knocks out light heavyweight Archie Moore in the ninth round at the old Yankee Stadium. Pre-renovation Yankee Stadium. One of the all-time great venues it. in sports. 1970, Oakland A's pitcher Vida Blue. No hits to Twins in a 6-0 win. 1980, Jets quarterback Richard Todd completes a then-NFL record 42 passes in a game. 1981, Phillies pitcher Steve Carlton strikes out a then-NL record 3,118th batter. He had 12 over 10 innings against the Expos. 82 NFL players begin a 57-day strike. 85, Michael Spinks beat Larry Holmes. 15 rounds, heavyweight champ of the world. 1986, the Jets and the Fish. 51-45 overtime game. A then NFL record, 884 passing yards. Ken O'Brien and Dan Marino. Duel at the Meadowlands. Here we go. Take the Hector O'Brien going for it all to Walker. Touchdown. Oh, my. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you've seen one of the greatest games in NFL history. In overtime, 51-45, to 45, the Jets have beaten Miami. It's the last time the Jets have won until Sunday in Cleveland. 1986 Padres pitcher Jimmy Jones pitches a one-hitter in his major league debut. 1990 A's pitcher Bob Welch, first 25-game winner in a decade. 91 USA Basketball announces the dream team for the 92 Olympics. Also in 92, Dennis Eckersley, second pitcher with 50 saves in a season. 97, Bill staged the third biggest comeback in NFL history. 37-35 win over the Colts. They were down 26. Bills have had better comebacks than that. 2001, Mike Piazza hit the home run at Shea, first game since 9-11. Unbelievable wow. moment off of the Braves, Scotty. I will never forget that one, no matter what kind of a fan you are in the New York area. Yeah, that's my buddy Piazza. Cool dude. I've known him for a long time. Couldn't be happier for him.